Pastor Devonte. That's pretty good for me, but if you love Jesus Christ in the room, could you just give him a shout of praise? All right, um, I'm ready to jump right into the word if that's all right with y'all. Is that cool? All right, if you got a Bible, grab a Bible because we believe in the Bible and we're talking about the Bible. <laughs> grab a Bible. This is just something that we do. Grab a Bible, hold it up in the air, hold it up high, hold it up high. Let your shoulder cap get hot. Your shoulder hurting yet? All right, we good then. We're going to hold it for a few more seconds. All right, say today. Oh. No, say it and make me feel it. Say today. today. That was cool. But say it like you know it. Say today. today. There we go. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. is going to teach me about me. About me. Mm -hmm. After today. I will know and fully understand that if I know, I know. Let's get it. Let's get it. Gospel according to Matthew chapter number 16. If you're turning in your Bibles, the gospel according to Matthew chapter number 16. Chapter number 16, Matthew 16. If you don't have it, the scriptures will be on the screen. If you are, like, turning in your Bible, which I encourage you to do, Matthew, chapter number 16. When you got it, say, I got it. All right. If you got to say, I got it. If you need a minute, say, I need a minute. Yeah, yeah, you almost, yeah, you said, oh, wait, but it's on, it's on the screen. I heard you. <laughs> it's right there. All right, it says this. Now, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And he said to them, but who do you yourselves say that I am? And Jesus said to him, blessed are you. Oh, we skipped a verse. Uh, we skipped 16. 16 says this. It says, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's important. Verse 17 says, and Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I will also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades. Gates of hell shall not prevail. It will not overpower it. it. says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to preach to you all today from the title. I want to tag a title to this text. Um, literally, if you're taking notes, which I highly encourage you because nerds rule the world. <laughs> like, this will, this will save you for your new uh this will save you for your your new Instagram threads. Anybody jump on threads? Some how many of y'all don't know what it is? Wow, that's crazy. That's like half the room. That's wild. That's wild. It's okay. It's all right. It'll help you catch it later. You know, it, it only had about 10 million people downloaded in the first Anyway, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. I want to preach, I want to tag a title to this message called If You Know, You Know. If you know, you know. Can we pray? Dear Holy Spirit, I thank you right now for the opportunity to speak to your people. God, I thank you that I um, get that opportunity, and I want to take it, Lord, as a privilege. God, I come against every distraction. I come against um, everything, Lord, that would try to steal this word from the inside of good soil that's in the room. God, and I pray that it would land on good soil, God, and you would get the harvest because the seed would go deep and be planted well in your people. God, help us to know who you are. 
by the end of this message. In Jesus' name. Somebody that believed it said, amen, amen. amen. Um, I've heard it put this way. That it's not what you know. It's, it's not what you know. It's what? It's who you know. Like, knowing the right people can be better than knowing the right things. And that's essentially what that axiom means. It's sometimes you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have the knowledge of the right people, you might not be able to apply that knowledge in the right place. Can we, can we go deeper? Jesus asked a question. And it's not because... Jesus doesn't know the answer. He's God. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. That means that he knows everything. Jesus asked the question not because he's unsure, but he wants to make sure that you're sure. See, when God asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. Many times it's because we don't. So Jesus asked a question. Because we need to be sure. He asked his disciples, he says, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. But then he asked them another question. He says, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, son of the living God. If you know, you know. Point number one, please write this down. This message is about identity. And it's about knowing the right person. And his name is Jesus. And when you know Jesus, things become unlocked to you that weren't necessarily available for you before. When you know Jesus, when you know the right person, it's the same way as knowing the right person right here right now on earth, things get unlocked to you that weren't necessarily available before. So point number one, write this down, is what do they say? What do they say? Jesus asked, he says, what do, he says, who do men, who do, who do people say that I am? And, 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 and they told him. They were like, man, this is what we heard. Why? Because it's important to know this, that the world isn't unanimous in their opinion of Jesus. Can I spend some time right there? The world isn't unanimous in their opinion of Jesus. Some of us understand and, and, and have known Jesus and have walked with Jesus, but the world doesn't seem to know who he is. So they think he was a good man that just taught us how to live life. They think that he was a man that taught us how to open up, you know, to these religious truths. Some people think that he's just a prophet. But you have to know that the world has tried to make God synonymous with his creation. That's why you hear things like, I just think God and the universe are the same. What do they say? Jesus wants you to know what they say about me first. <laughs> it's like, so if we had to answer him today, would be like, man, well, they say you're a prophet. They say you're a good man. They say that you're cool. They say that you like, they like you, you know. They say that you're your creation. But you have to know what you say. You have to know what they say because you're not naive. You have to know who God is not in order to know who God is. In order to know who God is, you have to know who God is not. So what do they say? And you answer that question in your heart. You say, man, I'm, I've heard. I mean, some say John the Baptist. No, that's not right. Some say Elijah. No, that's not right. Some say Jeremiah. No, that's not right. One of the other prophets. No, that's not right. But point number two, please write this down. Is what do you say you see how you answer this question will determine how you live your life 
how you answer this question says, who do you say that I am? What do you say? How you answer this question will determine how you live your life. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So how you answer this question will determine how you live your life. Because if you only see Jesus as a provider, you'll never see him as a healer. If you only know him as a healer, you'll never see him as a protector. If you only know him as a protector, you would never know him as the provider. Listen, you have to know who Jesus is. You have to answer that question within yourself. Because how you determine, how you answer that question will determine how you live your life. But I didn't really come to talk about none of that part of that. Really. That's just, I mean, that, that's just kind of sets the background for the sermon. The point that I really want to park on is something interesting that I noticed in Scripture. And I love, I love reading Scripture because, like, it's the only book that's alive. Like, the more you read it, the more it reads you. Like, it, it becomes a mirror. Like, you, you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you've spent any amount of time, like, in Scripture, you, like, you read some stuff where you'd be like, ooh. Uh-uh. Nah. I don't, I don't like that, Jesus. But he's not calling you to like it. Because... He knows what's best. Anyway, that, that wasn't in my notes. I'm, I'm just trying to get to this next point. This, this, this point is the one that just jumped out at me. This point is the one that messed me up. This point is the one. Like, I love reading scripture because it, 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 it has things in it that, like, you have to read the full context. Like, you can't just read the lines of scripture. You got to read before things and after things. And you got to, like, see when things come up and things are significant. I love scripture that way. And here's something that I want to get to on this particular scripture in verse number 17. If we can put it up on the screen, that'll be great. And Jesus said to him, after verse 16, uh, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Wait a second. Before this, I, 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 they referred to him as Simon. He said Simon Barjona. Barjona means son of Jonah. He was talking about his dad. He referred to him as Simon. But after he got the answer right, he referred to him as Peter. Point number three is this. When you know his name, you get your name. When you know his name, you'll get your name. When you know who he is, you'll find out who you are. That's the whole point of this message. If you know, you know. Here's what's fascinating about the story. It's because when you get and truly learn the identity of God, you'll truly learn the identity of you. And many of us are struggling with our own identity. And we're trying to figure out who we are first. But we're working it out backwards. If you figure out who he is, he'll just tell you who you're supposed to be. You won't have to figure anything out. All you have to do is ask. You'll say, all right, Lord, I know that you are the creator of heaven and the earth. I know that you stepped out on nothing and created everything. I know that you are good. I know that you are faithful. I know that you are all of these things. And since you are all of these things, since you know all of these things, since you are everywhere, I'm just going to ask you, who do you want me to be? Because 
When you speak that identity, it has to be so. Peter's name literally meant rock. I will say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. You are Peter. The question is, who are you? Who are you? Who, who, who are you supposed to be? Some of us, if we're honest in here at, at this stage, in this age, we don't know the answer to that question. If we're being honest, we don't know. But we also don't know who God is. We also don't have an idea of who God is. When you learn, when you know who he is, you learn who you truly are. So we're talking about identity, right? I remember walking through a place in my life where things got dark. And when things get dark, it's hard to see. It's in the darkness, though, that the development happens the most. When film gets developed, it gets developed in a dark room. It's in the darkness where you can't see everything all the time that things get developed. Friends, don't despise the dark right now because God can still do the work that develops you in the dark. You may feel like Simon right now, but oh, there's hope for you because he's about to call you Peter. He's about to tell you what your name means. He's about to tell you what you were created for. He's about to tell you your identity. All you have to do is ask him. All you have to do is live the way that he wants you to live. Answer the question, who do you say that I am? And when you get it right, Jesus Christ is Lord, you understand the essence of the gospel. You see, ah, I wasn't going to go here tonight, but thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, the full essence of the gospel, sometimes we stop at the fact that Jesus Christ saves, that he came to rescue you out of your sins, and all of that is true. But Jesus often spoke of the kingdom of God. Well, in order for it to be a kingdom, there has to be a king. Jesus is saying, the king that you're looking for, I'm it. You need a king and you need a savior. You need a Lord and a Savior. We, we love to shout the Savior part because we get in a lot of trouble. We get in a lot of darkness. We get in a lot of failures. We get in a lot of mistakes. And we whisper the Lord part. But you got to answer the question fully. You, I say that you are the Christ, son of the living God. Christ, the King. Christ, the Lord, the coming one. The Messiah, that's what Christ means. Don't shout just about the Savior and whisper about him being your Lord. Because he not only came to save you from what you were in, he came to teach you how to live so that you wouldn't get back into the mess that he saved you from in the first place. Am I making sense to anybody in the room? Otherwise, you just need to keep being saved. And you do need to keep being saved. But there are some things that you learn when you live his way that you don't necessarily need to be. Like, you learn, I can be generous. 
You learn that he is the moral standard for goodness. And as those things happen and as you learn those things, it's not that you are just being generous. It's that you are generous. You see how as you live his way and you do those things, it becomes an attachment to your identity. You don't just give grace, but because you gave grace, you are now gracious. Am I making sense? You don't just give mercy. You are now merciful. And friends, as you answer the question correctly of who do you say that I am? You'll learn who it is that you're supposed to be. As the keys comes up, I want to close with a few thoughts. Because when we're talking about identity, it always gets tough. Because the fact of the matter is, sometimes we don't want to change what he's calling us to change. But if you could do it your way and be okay, you would have been okay by now. So since that's not the case, at least for me, I can speak for myself. I don't know about y'all, but I can speak for myself. Since that's not always the case, it's like, Lord, I'm tired of just being Simon. <laughs> I want to know what I was created for. I want to know what I was created to do. I want to know who I was created to be. And that, friends, is your identity. The intersection between what you were created to do and who you were created to be is where you'll find your identity. But there are some places that you can start right now. Because I believe that the enemy of your soul wants you to not be aware of who it is that you already are. Like, do you know what it means to be a child of God? You're a child of God. He calls you friend. That means he wants to be with you as your business partner. He wants to be with you in your relationship. He wants to be with you on that job, even when it's getting on your nerves. Boy, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all felt that a little too much. We're going to pray in a second for everybody's job because some of y'all got jobs that's getting on your last nerve. But guess what? Every time you show up on time, it's part of your identity because you are faithful. Every time you bite your tongue on that customer service call, Knowing that they're getting on your nerve, knowing that they're talking to you crazy like it was your fault that they didn't pay on time. I ain't always been a pastor. <laughs> I've had other jobs, fam. I get it. I know what it's like. Every time you bite your tongue, you show patience because you are patient. Friends, I just want you to know who he already calls you. Not only do you have a specific purpose, a specific thing that you are in this earth to do that nobody else could do the way that you do it with your tone, with your fingerprint, with your voice. There's, there's that. But there are some things that he has called all of us to be as followers of Jesus. Friends. Do you realize that that message changes your life? When you know who he is, 
He'll just tell you who you're supposed to be. We're worried about what it is that I'm supposed to do, God. And God, why? What am I supposed to do? What? Who am I supposed to be? Who do you want me to marry, God? He'll tell you all of that. He will tell you all of that. But you got to answer the question correctly. The last thing that he told you, the last thing that he asked you, the last thing he said, have you answered him yet? Or are you still playing with his name? (laughs) 